Hey, hey, party people. Let's talk about production. I hope you're taking notes because I have a lot of info to throw down at you. Let's pretend that you've got your sample, you've got that first garment, and it's beautiful, and you are ready to mass produce, whether it's 50 pieces, 500 pieces, five pieces, what have you. This video is going to cover the order of operations for garment production. This is also referred to as your supply chain. The term supply chain is a little misleading because people think of supply as a thing, a button or a zipper or whatever. But supply chain is actually the sequence of processes in the production and distribution of a garment. The following order of operations or supply chain is for woven fabric garments like shirts out of cotton chambray or jackets out of wool and cut and sew knits like t-shirts out of jersey and hoodies made of fleece and leather. I have no experience in producing fully fashioned knits and fur, so I won't discuss those categories. There are two main categories of knits. Fully fashioned knits are garments that are shaped by increasing and decreasing number of stitches, not by adding darts or cutting out shapes. Like hand knit sweaters, you know, you make the shape one stitch at a time, right? But on a mass production scale. Cut and sew knits are done like how you typically think of garment making. Cut out the fabric according to the pattern and then sew it up. The giveaway is in the armhole. If you see a seam at the armhole, it's a cut and sew. If the armhole looks like more knit stitches and is often at kind of like a raglan placement, then that is a fully fashioned knit. Step one, issue cut tickets. And yes, in this video, I'm going to be going in sequential order of the supply chain. Issuing cut tickets. Basically, you finalize the quantities you wanna produce of every style for each colorway for each size. If you are pursuing the wholesale route, you cut based on your orders from stores. This is why on all your sales materials, you post an ordering deadline. You tell all the stores they have to order by a specific date so you can compile all your order totals and start production on time. If you are pursuing the direct-to-consumer route, you have to figure out how much inventory you think you can actually sell. Unless you're offering something highly specialized or custom, most people want their goods when they order them and do not want to wait very long for their stuff. If you watch my interview with Lucy B, she cuts to order, but she can cut and sew a bikini in 45 minutes. My advice, think of it this way. Would you rather post a sale early on because you're trying to get rid of stock that's not moving? Or would you rather post signs that say, sold out, we're making more, please join our email list and you'll be the first to know when we have more in stock? Which sounds better? Hmm? Step two, create your production patterns. Your sample pattern will change as your fit evolves, but a production pattern maker will look over the style to see if any changes can be made for fabric and sewing efficiency without changing the look too much. Example, we'll sample a leather jacket in-house and send a copy of the pattern in our sample to the factory that will cut and sew in bulk. I've had requests to put in an extra cut line so we can put more pattern pieces from each skin. Maybe that cut line runs along center back, maybe it cuts the sleeve in half, maybe you want to cut a wide strip for a ruffle, and it would be more efficient if the pattern piece was 54 inches long instead of 55 inches. You start producing bigger and bigger quantities, and these things do add up. Step three, finalize your tech packs. I have lots of videos on tech packs and I'll link that in the description box, but right now I wanna talk about ordering materials off the information in your tech packs. At this point, you should have filled out your bill of materials, your BOM, BOM, in your tech pack. So you should have a checklist of what you need to order. You need to calculate your yields so you can order your materials. Your yield, per garment is how much fabric you need to cut one piece of a certain style. When your yield for style 
Number 1234 is 1.3 yards. It means it takes 1.3 yards with that specific fabric width to make that garment. Now this yield needs to consider all the sizes you're cutting. Your sample pattern maker should have noted the yield for the sample size on the pattern card. Your sample size should be the middle size of your size range. You need to figure out the yield for your largest size and your smallest size. Also remember, if you do a t-shirt and you make a bias trim or something with the same fabric, you need to buy more fabric to cut your bias strips. Some people forget pieces when it's not a specific pattern piece. Step four, order all materials. And you do this early so you can do all these other steps while you wait for your fabrics and trims to arrive. Double check the lead times for all your quantities. Production quantities often take longer than sample quantities. If you don't have the money to pay for everything at once, first order the things that take the longest. Stuff that's going to sit on a boat, stuff that's custom made for you, things like that. Step 5. Grade your patterns. Grading is when you make all the sizes and if it's a new style, you need to test the grade. If you're going from a bomber or a barracuda jacket and then you're going to cut a varsity jacket with the same roomy body and sleeves, you don't need to test all the sizes again. But if you're doing a new style with a totally different fit, like say a blazer, you need to test the grade. Fit is so important and not just the fit of the sample size but consumers will wear every size so you need to fit every size and honestly this is one of the many reasons I recommend people start with a single item category and you may be wondering well Zoe you already ordered the materials you told me I had to figure out the yields for all the different sizes and so how am I supposed to figure out the yield for the different sizes if I'm grading the patterns after I order the materials you're just gonna have to estimate okay you should have established the grade rule in your tech pack from before. Some of these styles are going to be repeats. Either way, you have to estimate the yield because, again, you really want to order your materials in advance so you're not sitting, waiting, you know, having a stop on your production because you're waiting for your fabric to come in. Before you ask, no, I will not do a grading video. People ask me all the time, but I won't do one because I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I'm a designer and I never, I learned how to grade one t-shirt just to know the basics of it, but I, I don't actually know how to do it. And I've always sent out my grading and the vast majority of designers don't grade. We all send it out. Okay? We decide. How much bigger and smaller each size is going to be. This is called establishing the grade rule. But I've literally only ever graded one t-shirt to understand the concept. And if someone asked me, do it again, I could not do it again. <laughs> okay, back to grading. Get a sample done in the final fabric in each size. This is called a size run or size set. Have a lot of people wear these samples and give you notes. Some people say to do this earlier in the process, but I disagree and I'll tell you why. For one, if you are in the wholesale market, you might not get orders for every style and every size. Let's say you showcase eight styles and you only get orders for six styles. The total waste of money to do a size run on all the styles. A company I used to work for used to offer a women's size 14 on most styles, but we only ever got orders for up to 10, sometimes 12, so we never graded up to a 14. Sometimes we got so few orders for a size 0, we would cancel those because it wouldn't be worth the cost of production. And yes, someone has to call up all the stores and make sure it's okay. If you're someone who is doing one item, you're a brand new company and you're starting with one item, then yes, once you have your sample beautiful and fitting great, then you can do a size run and get those samples done and get those fit before you run production. Whether you're in wholesale or direct to consumer, 
I wouldn't do a, a size run until you finalize the line at the earliest. You might ditch a style at the final stage, so you don't want to have to have wasted the time and money on grading. And again, if you're just offering the one style to begin with, or two, then yeah, go ahead and grade those two. <laughs> I keep mentioning it, but I do think that people who start really small are really smart. Next step is to make your markers. A marker in the world of garment production is not the thing I'm drawing with, but it is a giant sheet of paper with the pattern pieces drawn on top. And then you lay this giant piece of paper on top of your layers of fabric. And then you cut all your layers of fabric with a giant vertical knife using that sheet of paper as a guide. The marker must be the same width as the fabric you're using, you know, with a little margin for the selvage. And the pattern pieces must be drawn on grain and as tightly packed as possible to eliminate fabric waste. When you make patterns, you mark the grain with a single line or a single line with double arrows. That means on your marker, you can lay your pattern piece this way or that way, like your neckline pointing one end or the other, as long as it follows the grain. With fabrics that have a nap or hairs, you mark your pattern with a single arrow. And on your pattern, across your pattern, all the pattern pieces, the arrows should be going the same direction. These fabrics include faux and real furs, velvet, velour, velveteen, that whole family, carpets, and suede. All your arrows have to go in the same direction, so all your velvet hairs and all your fur hairs go in the same direction. Generally speaking, the smallest and largest sizes of a garment will sell fewer pieces than the middle sizes you might cut twice as many mediums as you do the extra smalls. So let's say you want 10 extra smalls and 20 mediums. You would make a production marker with every medium pattern piece drawn twice and every small drawn once. Then you'd stack 10 layers of fabric, put the marker on top and cut everything out with one of those big electric vertical knives that scared the bejesus out of me off one marker. So, because of everything I just told you, you have to finalize your fabric, finalize your pattern, finalize your grade, and finalize how many garments you want before you make your marker. The next step is the actual garment making, cut make trim. Have you heard someone talk about CMT? What's the CMT? That's the price to cut, make, trim. Cut out the fabric, sew up the garment, and add trims as necessary like buttons. Embellishments like embroideries are often done elsewhere and by someone else, so generally will not be included in CMT. But you want to make sure you get clarification on all the parts that are included in the CMT price with your factory. When the factory starts sewing, they should send you a TOP or a TOP sample. TOP stands for top of production. The factory starts running the production and sends you the first one off the line because that's what the production run is going to look like. Generally, people only do this on the first production run of a style. If you produce the exact same garment over and over again with the same sewing facility, you probably won't need more TOP samples each time you sew up more. Important note, factories do not start working until everything they need arrives. It's a total waste of time to start and stop and redo stuff. If you're cutting a t-shirt, an identical t-shirt in pink, white, and blue, and you're still waiting for the blue fabric, they won't start cutting or anything until the blue arrives. If the sewing factory has everything, fabric, labels, hooks and eyes, interfacing, everything except your zippers, they won't start sewing until your zippers show 
up. That's why you always double check lead times on your supplies. You ask for sample lead times and production lead times. Depending on what the embellishment is, you'll do this step after cutting and before sewing or after sewing or in the middle of sewing. If you're doing an embroidery or a bit of beading or an applique and it's all on one pattern piece, then you send these panels out to get embroidered, debossed, whatever, and then they will send it back to the sewing factory if we are talking about two different places doing this. You should have figured out the details of the embroidery, the colors, the placement, etc. during the sampling process. If you have the embellishment across sewn seams, you'll need to sew these pieces together, send these pieces out to get beaded, etc., get them sent back, and have everything sewn together. If you watched my how to design at every price point video, then you know some processes cost more than others. And generally it takes longer and costs a bit more to sew things partially and then send it out to add beading and then ship it back to finish sewing. Something to consider in the design process. If you have your embellishment as a patch, whether it's a big sturdy patch or maybe there's a lot of beading and stitching on a delicate backing fabric, Check with your sewing factory to see if they can do them. You can also do something after everything is sewn together, like distressing denim or, you know, smocking a whole garment. And garment dyeing is when you dye the whole garment after everything has been sewn up already. The last step is finishing. This is not part of the construction. It is steaming the garment. It's clipping the long threads from the sewing. It's hanging the clothes on hangers and pulling one of them clear plastic bags over them or folding up the garments with a layer of tissue paper, wrapping up clothes to protect them in inventory or shipping. And uh, this is one of those things people don't think about but is necessary and takes time and money. If you've outsourced your production, they should ship you the garments all finished, ready for you to ship out to your customers. A lot of design companies like to take all the clothes out of the factory's packaging and then repackage them into the design company's branded packaging. Don't forget to do a quality check on 5% of the production. You should check the specs to make sure they come within tolerance. Your tolerances should be marked in your tech packs. Your tech pack can say center front for size six is 32 inches, plus or minus three quarters of an inch is okay. And that three quarters of an inch is your tolerance. And then that's it, it's shipping time. Keep in mind when you're running production, you should be working on advertising and marketing for this collection and sampling for the next one. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new today. Let me know in the comments if you want a similar process video on making samples. Share, subscribe, check out the description box for links to related videos, links to my website and my general shenanigans, and I will see you in the next video.